Hi, this is Holly of Hollywood again, and this show is dedicated to the Friends of Freedom, especially those in Taiwan, Hong Kong, and China. Uh, it's I'm going to be speaking also about the South Pacific and the prisoners of war there, and also the coronavirus 2020, and some of the perhaps comparisons that I'm seeing of uh, the Chinese government right now, February 2020, is calling this a war. And it is a war. They're dealing with a deadly disease and they're treating people with the virus as being, for lack of a better word, the enemy. <clears throat> uh, my dad in this book, Rice and Salt, uh, wrote some things in the margin. And one of the things he wrote is he underlined this part that he says, this magnificent view made me think of how wonderful it is to be a free man. And he says, note, sons and daughters, how wonderful it is to be a free man. There's the people of Taiwan that in my youth, I prayed for every, at least every Saturday for the freedom of the people of Taiwan. Taiwan is, is its own individual nation. And just last night, I was hearing about Michael Yon, Y-O-N, who is truly a friend of freedom, and him having been nine months following the protests in Hong Kong of the youth and different people who want, who are lovers of freedom, who want to retain what freedom they can as long as they can, rather than being overtaken by the regime of the uh, communist leadership. And Right now, in the light of what's going on there with this coronavirus, uh, Michael Yan was going to report of how the medical workers there are on strike because they aren't even given masks or anything, um, you know, to help them not get that disease. And uh, he was turned back at the airport because he was a friend of freedom, because he was a reporter. And same thing with this other reporter who was in China. He disappeared. <sighs> And so, okay, so we need not to cause panic, and there needs to be some control. But when it's ultra control, and as I've read this book, Rice and Salt, and looking at what happened in the prisoner of war camps, and how when this man got his freedom, and uh, how they, you know, they thought of food, of how wonderful it's food, I can't help but to think of what's happening in China now and also Hong Kong with the implementation of the communist regime is starting to have the same laws and control and party influence there in Hong Kong that they have in the main part of China. And I see, I mean, my goodness, I was on Twitter uh, a good part of yesterday looking at the videos that came out of China before they cut the internet, internet there where they were actually welding shut apartment building doors, locking people in. They were first given their uh, freedom to voluntarily be home, but then uh, the whole people in the city were locked in, whether or not they had the coronavirus, or if they did, their, anybody of their associates were taken into quarantine centers, but then they decided that all they can do is lock them in. So they won't be able to go out for like more than two weeks or who knows when. There was a video of two young men that are actually about four young men in their 20s who were fighting of all these people were trying to take them to this quarantine area. These people didn't even have coronavirus and they may or may not have been uh, exposed to it or some of their relations may not have been exposed. For all we know, these people, um, these young men were students who were sympathetic towards the people of Hong Kong and their, the, the liars or the people who are doing misinformation, they could be taking them, capturing them and throwing them down into this dungeon. It was like four or five flights of stairs down to this quarantine area. Well, the young men didn't look sick at all. And who's to say that they weren't just outspoken in their uh, solidarity with the people of Hong Kong, um, and they're, you know, some 
type of official policy is to say, hey, let's use this as an opportunity to put these voices of, of freedom away. So uh, <clears throat> I'm kind of out of the practice of prayer, but this is a good time to pray, not that just praying alone will be the answer, but Michael Yan wants to be on the front lines and he's gonna try again from Taiwan, I think today, to get back to Hong Kong because he made some very good friends there in Hong Kong who are friends of freedom. And they want him to report. They want him to report. He's actually American, originally from Florida, and he served in Iraq. Uh, and he is a war correspondent, and he's there right now on the front lines of now Hong Kong. Uh, and then we have Taiwan and that whole history. But <laughs> these poor people who are trying to be good, and yet there's a certain humanity. My father's last words were, written words where God said humankind and he underlined the kind of humankind three times and where is that kindness and you know there's Christian charity and there's Buddhist charity and there's probably Confucius charity too but there's a tyranny that wasn't just in the Japanese prison guards or the Japanese it's also in China there's tyranny in uh, certain cruelties or inhumanity to man that's done also to individuals, um, sometimes even in the city, over minor things. Uh, I saw them, these guards, a few days ago on a video pulling this woman out of her car because there was a restriction that nobody was allowed to drive. There wasn't any compassion. They pulled her out of the car and then I think they um, put some sort of drug in her to make her collapse, like faint and throw her away and then there's a child or throw her into some paddy wagon to go who knows where and then they uh, we know that they had uh, forced abortions in China where they take women but this this they're all afraid of each other uh, because someone's going to tell on somebody and they're in implementing this these laws and there's like 20 foot high or 20 story high apartment buildings where they're closing everybody into it in Wuhan so okay there's this um, I want to say epidemic, but that's not quite the right word. This uh, panademic, panademic, or whatever the word is, uh, flu that is extremely contagious, that is, you know, perhaps could be like the Spanish flu, and so this is coronavirus. But, you know, these good people were wanting to be good, but had they known that they had to escape before they got into the the prison camps of their own apartments or the prison camps of the quarantine center. They were good citizens, good communists, you know, trying to be good. And there was a story of one little girl who was crying. They took her mother and dad away, but nobody was allowed to go near her. And they maybe smuggled food to her, but she was still crying, saying she missed her mommy and daddy. So as I read about the South Pacific, and specifically in this book, Rice and Salt, I see how there was in humanity to man and there was also humanity to man there was humankind and that humankind was sometimes from the Japanese prison guards and then there was the inhumanity that was also sometimes from the prison guards and so there's the Communist Party like not neighborhood watch but those people who tell like is it possible that some of these people before they die and they don't even have the coronavirus can tie a bunch of sheets together and break a window and get out of their 10-story apartment buildings? I don't know. Or what about that? those young men that I saw being pulled into the uh, several stories down into this quarantine area? So what can we do? You know, St. Paul was in prison, and as the story goes in Western civilization, you know, God created an earthquake, and it broke the prison walls down. So... You know, we can pray for these people to be comforted. Uh, I used to practice, and I should still practice, this Kuan Yin Rosary. And there's also the Rosary to Jesus' Mother. And there's also just making offerings of and, and meditation upon that spirit of freedom. You know, I'm free to sit here and tell these stories and to make a fool of myself or not, but these people... As I understand it, they have the internet cut off. They can't even share a video. They can't even do anything anymore. 
They can just wait. They can sing to each other through the windows and cry to each other through the windows and maybe devise something. But in the South Pacific, you know, when the radios went out for a while, uh, they had Tokyo Rose. And I read about Tokyo Rose and that they listened to Tokyo Rose. At least they had some classical music, like we listen to NPR. And there's some classical music and there's good stories. But there's also a, unfortunately, a certain communist bent, even in NPR, huh, on some of the stories. And the Tokyo Rose wasn't communist. It was just anti-American. And there was that propaganda. But sometimes they were able to get other radio things when we started having the victory. Again, my father was part of the liberating forces of the United States Marine Corps, United States of America, with the Air Wing Division of the Marines, liberating them, uh, liberating the Philippines. But what we're seeing on China right now is just astronomically horrific. And the question is, yeah, what do we do? What do they do? I mean, they're spraying people, and they're having quarantines in the cities, and they're not wanting people out of the cities. But is it also more than that? Because they're not letting this freedom reporter go into Hong Kong to report about that or to report about how Hong Kong's trying to protect themselves. I saw a sign on the internet thing from someone from Hong Kong saying, we don't want the tyrants, if the tyrants can't do it or something of that nature, you know, we want to be able to protect ourselves. So it's so overwhelming in China. They've just locked people in their apartments. They've locked people in their houses. I mean, literally welding the door short, short, shut. Um, and they're just not going to deal with them it appears. How do they get food? I don't know. Are they going to get food for two weeks or is it going to be longer than two weeks? I mean, and then if you're thrown into a quarantine area and you don't have it, well, you're certainly going to get this disease uh, afterwards. So a lot of these people who are in Wunan and what came from the country and went to work in the factories and the cities there. So their home is more rural. Their heritage is more rural. But all these young people are in these apartments and not so young people now. And they're just prisoners. And, uh, and so they're crying and yearning for freedom right now. They're yearning for what's right and true and, and, and life and humanity, you know, humankind. We can all be good little girls or good little commies or good little socialists or what have you. And we don't want to be abusive capitalists either. Of course, China is a very capitalist nation now, but it's also still communist, you know, capitalist communist. There's a thing I read years ago on the capitalist communist conspiracy. Actually, it was a whole tape uh, series by Elizabeth Clare Prophet. But... <laughs> You know, it's that humankind, humanity, and and Jesus was a world teacher, but we also have Gautama Buddha as a world teacher, and we have the beautiful devotions of Kuan Yin or Kanzian, which is not anti-Christ, which is not anti-Christian, but which is humankind. Uh, so I can only hope that these people who are locked in there will find comfort in the mother of mercy, and whether it's the mother of mercy of the East or the mother of mercy from the West, Jesus's mother, uh, and that they have that comfort. I personally have been comforted through the Holy Spirit who speaks about sending his comforter, where I've been embraced and hugged. I've heard stories of the Pentecostal people who have been hugged by the Holy Spirit and actually, I was even at a, a Krishna uh, temple when I experienced this. Um, and God is no respecter of persons in one sense of the word. That's a quote from a Bible. I couldn't tell you exactly when. And yet there is great love for each individual individually. And my offering was trying to forgive someone who had done wrong to me and had done wrong to his wife where his wife had a black eye. And, and uh, I was working at a school and... And I had been singing this mantra, mine is to forgive, God's is to repay as he will. Mine is to forgive 10,000 million times. I got carried away there in the streets of West, and the dirt roads of West Virginia, there with the cows and the whatever it was there called. And 
this community and I was a free agent. I was a friend of the community. I wasn't a Krishna uh, devotee uh, signed in or whatever official. I was a friend of the community. And I was singing, mine is to forgive, God's is to repay as they will. he will. And I was going really deep into that meditation, working on a specific issue that happened in my early 20s and just in my general life. But here I was tested with true forgiveness. And when this man bullied me, the one who had given his black eye right before in the classroom, and I talked to the authorities there, they said, well, you should forgive him. And I said, well, forgiveness, where is justice first? And of course, there is a balance with justice and mercy, as we see with that image of the goddess of uh, justice, you know, Lady Portia with the blindfold, and she has the balance scales, you know, and uh, Portia, the goddess of justice, the, the um, image of uh, Lady Justice. And so there's justice and mercy, but you know, extending that forgiveness to those who we've wronged or those who have wronged us is a really challenge. And so I was challenged with forgiving and I worked in it and I struggled in my soul and I, and I, in my psyche, what have you. And I finally bumped into this fellow whose name was Maha Prasad. And he, and I said, look, I'll forgive you if you forgive me. And I didn't even know what I was asking him to forgive me for. And he jumped up like a little kid and and it was this whole energy release. And right after that is when I made this goodwill offering at the um, altar, yes, in Jesus' name and in the name of his mother, because Jesus did have a real mother. He, she, he was born of a mother. He was born as a little baby and held in the arms of his mother and loved and, and everything that children are uh, that, who have mothers and loving mothers and a child and and I and that's when I received that hug you know that hug from the hand of God so I can only hope that the people in prison camps whether it's in the Tibetans or the prisoners of war now and, and throughout history those who have truly suffered those who have suffered from old age disease and death those people who are suffering right now from this horrendous crime against humanity, uh, locking people in, but okay, there's some rumor that maybe it was a man-made virus. We don't know that. But you know, how do you deal with these natural disasters? I mean, there's war brings out the worst and the best of people. And just as natural disasters bring out the worst and the best in people. And so we have to be prepared. And that's part of what the light of history does. We go into and we shine the light on history, but then when a current event happens and you see how it is and you see how you can be the better person, it's not all about being angry and getting justice. It's humanity and humankind. Like, you know, don't abort the babies. You know, don't steal. If the woman was in the car, don't be cruel to her. Don't take the parents away from the child, you know, and develop that heart. Uh, you know, my dad he writes here that he danced with Miss Roberts. We have a picture of this Filipino that he danced with in the same area where this man found freedom. And, you know, to be ignorant and just to ignore and to develop that hardness of heart isn't the cure, isn't, you know, okay, to protect yourself and your own, okay, that's good, that's all well and good, and that's what people have to do, but at the same time, to put your lot in, so to speak, with the friends of freedom, there are there is so great a cloud of witness in heaven of those who truly have practiced forgiveness and justice and mercy and wisdom. Mary Baker Eddy, founder of Christian Scientists, believed that the healing of the nations was also to the restoration, to restoring the soundness of the Christ mind. So it doesn't mean you have to be Christian. It means that there is that soundness of mind, the soundness of heart, the soundness of body. Let that mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. So I offer this prayer right now that that mind might be in Michael Yan that was in Christ Jesus. And that mind might be in the people of Hong Kong that was in Christ Jesus. And that mind might be in the people of Taiwan, which was in Christ Jesus. 
and that mind might be in the people of China and those who are locked in that was in Christ Jesus. That we pray for the restoration of the soundness of the Christ mind, past, present, and future, of all those who went through hard times, all those who've gone through economic hardship and injustices. And we pray for that restoration of the love, the wisdom, and the power, and that balanced fleur de lis, that balanced, that helps make them in their right mind. Um, opium's not the cure, pot's not the cure, uh, government's not the cure. And it can be helpful. I don't say that opium could be helpful, but I guess people do need painkillers sometimes. Um, and people use pot for painkillers, but it's not the cure. Christian science people don't use medicine. They uh, leave it to, as the story of Maker, Mary Baker Eddy, they leave it to um, they leave it to the healing through the hand of Christ. And so there can be comfort. Uh, Jesus promised that he would send the comforter. So I think it's a good thing for us to practice. Not only get your mask in advance. In fact, that's what Michael Yon said in this radio interview. America, get your mask now. In a month, you may not be able to. They cannot get masks uh, you know, to protect against the coronavirus in Hong Kong. So he personally brought 500 masks there to pass out, and he's trying to get more. So if you can get masks, even though I'm not good at wearing masks, it's a good idea to kind of think that way right now before panic sets in. And you know, be prepared, but also work on your heart and work on being kind and, and working, tuning into your, the, your fellow friends of freedom. You know, we all like the idea of freedom. We all like those views. We're, a lot of us are up here because of our love of freedom, of nature, of, of flowing water and uh, pure water and not being locked into the big cities. But here we are. We have freedom to sing, to see those views, and to hear the internet, to make our voice heard. And so I encourage you to look up Michael Yon, Y-O-N, on the internet and see what he's reporting from Hong Kong. And he's also on Twitter, of course, and also for all Friends of Freedom. And keep on keeping on, even as these people in this book, Rice and Salt, and my own father had to just keep on keeping on as we endure. And if it's not war of one kind, it's war of the other. And certainly recently, uh, certain people have been in a war and there was a victory because of good uh, lawyers and these things. And so I am grateful for all Friends of Freedom. And this show, again, is dedicated to all Friends of Freedom and those who would be. Jesus said, if they knew better, they would do better. So let's just hope that something good could come of this ill, this evil. And I don't know how it is, but we can just pray. And I pray for all those people who are stuck in those uh, places that are not good. And uh, we just pray for somehow the enlightenment and the light of history and the light of humanity to take place and no trickery. And I um, didn't mean for this to be a religious show, but I accept this done right now in Jesus' name. And where two or three are together, gathered together there in my name, there I am in the midst of them. I am that I am. And so I invite those who would say a prayer to go for it, say a prayer. And even though I'm not in the practice of prayer, if you guys can do it, if one little word that I said can inspire you to do it as a solution and also get your masks while you can, if you can. And make sure you drink lots of water and wash your hands and <laughs> do everything that's good. So uh, Holly of Hollywood, last episode was hindsight is 2020. And so we look into the light of history and we see that certain things where people are just thinking of food. These people who are locked up right now, they're really thinking of food. But also, Jesus said, we shall not, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that cometh out of my mouth. So there is a great conversion of people in China, uh, just naturally. And we just hope and pray that there is some comfort to those people who are locked in these deep cellars. And uh, friends of freedom, arise, arise, and uh, practice the kindness of humankind. And sometimes, sure, kindness is keeping the person with the virus away from you. So <laughs> um, God bless America, and uh, thank you. And I'm Holly of Hollywood coming up from North Hollywood, and my family's in the Hollywood industry. And I didn't really dwell on that other than I'll just say again, 
that my dad graduated from North Hollywood High School in 1942, and he was in the South Pacific from 42 to 45 as part of the liberation of the Philippines in the Air Wing Division, the Marines. And I graduated from North Hollywood High School in 1976, and my dad's brother was dropping the snow on Jimmy Stewart in It's a Wonderful Life. And there are many angels who are wanting to earn their wings. So just, you don't even have to mention their names. Just say, all those who want to earn their wings, go for it now. Let air, land, and sea. We pray for compassion and mercy and solution to this horrendous situation concerning the coronavirus and all those who are in prison in one form or another. So thank you very much and have a good day.